Hello, and welcome to this month's I2 Costex Coffee Break webinar. My name is Jonathan Velasquez, and I am a consultant at RIB. This month, we'll be covering fundamental workflows for those who are getting started with I2 Costex by looking at how you can set up projects and buildings within the program. Today, we'll explore the very first steps needed when entering Costex. This video will cover the basic but essential parts to assuring a quick and easy setup used prior to measuring and estimating portions of the COSTEX software. For those who don't know, I2 COSTEX is a fully integrated estimating solution with universal application. Everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD drawings, and BIM files as well. I2 COSTEX is available in a variety of feature levels, depending on the size of your business or your estimating requirements. I2 COSTEX offers quick and easy on-screen takeoff and measurement that can be live linked to our comprehensive workbooks to help you save time and eliminate error. The platform also offers a professional report writer, an auto-revisioning tool to help with new drawing versions, and much more. And as you can see, there are a huge variety of file types supported by I2 COSTEX to help with compatibility, as we want your import-export processes to be as smooth as possible. Our latest webinar was all about structured timber framing and carpentry and covered detailed workflows for estimating joints, studs, and other horizontal and vertical members. To view this webinar, you can visit www.i2costex.com forward slash webinars or RIB's YouTube page. For this month's webinar, we'll be going through the basics that you need to know for setting up projects and buildings. We'll start by indicating the differences between the project and buildings. This will be highlighted through an example. We'll follow with opening and running the COSEX software, setting up a new project and new building, also showing the alternative paths to launch the default select building window and to initiate a new project and building. We'll go into exploring the project and building properties and other built-in features that help reduce setup times, such as the based on features. We'll end with summarizing all the covered steps within this webinar on how to set up a new project and building. I will now be differentiating the project and buildings. COSTEX utilizes a two-level organization hierarchy, where projects are the first level of this hierarchy and therefore must be first created for buildings to be saved in. A project acts much like a folder type, where we can use this for higher level tasks. Buildings, on the other hand, are the second level of the hierarchy and therefore must be created second to be housed under a project. A building acts much like a file type, and since multiple buildings can be contained under a project, they may be based on the user's preference on how they would like to see the project components differentiated. Some examples of this could be construction or structure types, stages and zones, or cost divisions, and many more. As you can see here, this is a diagram to put the method into perspective. It is evident that each of these projects and building examples are organized differently and based on user preference on how they would like to see the project components split. The first example is St. Luke's School. This is a singular entity with only one building called the New Science Block. Thus, there is no need to differentiate any components, but if, for instance, there was another building called the new math block, it could be said that the predominant component type would be departments. As per the second building, Quayside Offices, this shows two buildings called Office Block A and Office Block B, each stored by zones slash stages as a predominant component type. Now, as for Project 3, called Westfield Plaza. This shows three buildings. These are broken down by budget cost plan, detailed estimate, and schedule of quantities. In this case, the predominant component type would be estimate formats. You can definitely see how it is ultimately up to the user's control which component the project and buildings are organized by. So now we'll be switching over to getting started on the i2 COSTX software. Once installed on your desktop of your computer, you can double click on the icon 
on the desktop or on the taskbar. A window with your password and username will pop up. Please enter the password. What we see here is as we start off the software, i 2 Caustics prompts us to its default select buildings window. It focuses on the top hand side, any recent buildings. And at the bottom are all the buildings and their associated projects within the database. Now moving to the right hand side, we see two buttons, one called new building and another called new project. By clicking on either, it will prompt us to their properties window where we'll fill in the required fields in order to create either the new building or the new project. So let's test these out. It prompts us to project properties window. We'll cancel out of that. And by clicking on the new building button, it'll prompt us to the building properties window, which we'll cancel out of that for now. Now, if for any reason we have a blank screen like this and all windows are closed and you would like to get back to the default select buildings window, there are two options and two alternatives where we can double click on the empty space to get back. Now we'll cancel out of that for now. And the other method is by going to the top left and clicking the file tab and searching for the browse button. This will also bring us back to the default select buildings window. I will now be canceling out of this window and showing you an alternative route on how to create a building. By going to the top left corner, we'll click the file tab and search for the new button. We'll select this new button, which will prompt us to the building properties window. For now, we'll cancel out of here. I'll move on and show you two alternative ways on how to create a new project now via the system administration button. As you probably see, under the home tab, we will see the system administration button. We'll click on this and search for the project section. Under this, all we need to do is click the insert button in order to prompt the project properties window. We'll cancel out of this once more. And the other method in order to create a new project is going to the top left corner once again and clicking the file tab, searching for the system administration button at the bottom. And if not prompted already to the projects tab, we'll click on the projects tab. Click the insert button and it will prompt us back to the project properties. I will now be going through the project properties with you as we begin our new project. Under the project info tab, there are two required fields in order to create a new project, them being the name field and the location field. So we'll start with those. We'll name this project webinar dash uses initials, in this case, my initials, and we'll click from the drop down menu, default location. As for the project code, this is where you would put your project's organization coding structure. In this case, we'll leave it blank. Following is the notes field. This is where higher level details are placed, such as client details, project addresses, and much more. Let's move on to the values tab. Values can be inserted and act much like factors. They can be something like allowances, taxes, etc. These can all be applied upfront to a project. Following is the Zones tab. Zones give the ability for takeoffs and costings to be captured under user-defined project attributes such as stages, structure types, department, and room types, etc. This eliminates the use of creating multiple buildings for each zone's components chosen. Let's move on to the last tab, Users tab. Here we can notice two tables where on the left hand side is a specific list of available users. This is set up in the network configurations. But by using the middle buttons, you can choose on the users that you would like to select and move to the right hand table. These will be the selected users and be given access to the project. 
As you can notice, up top, you can also choose administrator. In this case, I'll leave it as myself. Now, once we've filled in all the inputs, we can now click the insert button. We can see that our webinar-jv project has been completed. Now that we've finished setting up our project, we'll close out of this window and create a new building. By going to the top left, we'll click on the file tab and on the new button. We'll be prompted to the building properties window. Here, there are also two required fields in order to create this new building. They are the name and the project. We'll name this building, building one. And we'll click on the drop down menu on our previous project that we just created. Here in the building code, this is where you would put your organization's building coding structure. And under the building type, this is where you could insert or choose from the drop down menus the different construction types, such as commercial, educational, hotel, and many more. For now, we'll leave this as blank. Now, as you see, we have a based on section underneath. We'll go more in depth later on in this webinar. So we'll move on. There is a based on units of measure underneath. Here, under the drop down menu, you'll see different units, either in imperial or in metric. But for now, we'll leave it as meters. We also have the default height field, which we'll leave blank, and the notes field. This is where lower level details will come into play, much like building details or building addresses this is user this is user defined we also have a restricted access where we could either choose to keep this building shared or private but for now we'll leave it as shared let's move on to the standard dimensions group tab by clicking on this tab we'll see a, plenty of different groups but to bring in with this building we'll click on only the first group a10, A1010 standard foundations to bring in. So once we have completed all the inputs, we can now click on the insert button. We can now see that building one has been completed. And the first group that we've chosen, A10, A1010 standard foundations have been pulled in. There have been no drawings or workbooks pulled in yet. So we'll close out of this building and create a new building by going back up to the file tab and clicking new. This building that we're creating will be called building two. We'll choose the previous project as before. And now with this building, I'll show you how this can compare it to building one by using the based on features. So the based on features act much like a template where you can use and pull in data from previous projects and buildings associated with it. So the project I'll be pulling in is demo material and the building associated with it is called Autodesk University New Teaching Block. So the four pieces of information that you can pull in from this Autodesk University New Teaching Block building is drawings, dimension groups, dimensions, and workbooks. So as you can see, if I unclick the dimension groups, this will come back up. But if I click it, it will be grayed out because we are pulling in the dimension groups from this prior building. The majority of the time, the dimension groups and the workbooks will be clicked and chosen. So that being said, we can click the insert button now. We can now see that building two has been created along with importing all the dimension groups from the prior building. They're all zeroed out because there are no takeoffs done yet. There have no drawings been pulled in, but we do see that their workbook has been pulled in called elemental estimate. We can see here how we can use this as a template for a new building. This can help save and cut and reduce setup times.
the based on feature can also be used. Let's say, for instance, that the building two has been saved under the wrong project and you would like to save it under the correct project. So for now, we'll close this. We'll create a new building with the same name, building two, and we'll save it under the correct project. In this case, we'll leave it as demo one. Now, using the based on section, we can pull in the data from building two that we've previously created. We'll click all the informational pieces of data that we want to pull in so they could be exactly the same and we can insert. We now see that building two was created and is an exact image of the prior building two, except now it is saved under the correct project. I will now close out of this and we'll head back to the presentation where I'll summarize what we have learned in this webinar. So in conclusion, we have gone through the differences between project and buildings, where project act as folder types and building act as file types. We've also gone through how to create either a project or building through the default select building window, and the alternative paths to create a building via double clicking on the empty space within the caustics window and alternative paths to creating a project via the system admin buttons. We've also gone through detailing all project and building properties. And lastly, we've focused on the based on features which can create a building template to cut down on estimator setup time. Thank you for joining this month's webinar. And if you'd like to watch any other webinars, you can view them at www.i2costex.com forward slash webinars. And if any of you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out at support.int at rib-software.com.